Good morning to our viewing public and members of the media. Thank you for joining us. I am Kavita Sukram, Corporate Communications Officer at the Ministry of Finance. Today, the Honorable Colm Imbert, Minister of Finance, will be providing an update on matters relating to finance. We will be taking questions from the media later on. So without further ado, I will now hand you over to the Honorable Colm Imbert, Minister of Finance. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I guess you all know we have some connectivity issues in Trinidad and Tobago. I understand there's some issues with T-Mobile and this is an affected internet, but we have managed somehow to do this broadcast using other alternative uh, providers. I just wanted to have a brief conference this morning to talk about three issues in particular. One that I find very bothersome is this continuing false claim about an inheritance tax. And it appears no matter how many times we debunk this false allegation, it just reemerges like a bad penny. Someone told me and actually sent me a photograph of a billboard up in San Fernando in the Taruba area, a huge thing, alleging that the government intends to impose a 25% inheritance tax. Now, as far back as the 14th of June, I sent out a press release, making it crystal clear that this was ludicrous, fabricated, outrageous, and that the leader of the opposition was just engaging in a flight of fantasy, had made up this story, but it just continues. I, I don't know what the issue is. This is some sort of new approach to propaganda in Trinidad and Tobago. For those who wish to know, there are taxation guides published by all of the leading auditing firms I have with me. For example, EY's Worldwide Estate and Inheritance Tax Guide. And in this document, it will tell you all the countries in the world that have inheritance tax and estate tax, a wealth tax, and so on. It's the 2023 guide. Trinidad and Tobago is not in there. Trinidad and Tobago will never be in there. There will never be an inheritance tax in Trinidad and Tobago under this government. I just don't understand why this thing just keeps recurring like a bad penny. The other thing that I find of deep concern is the, another piece of fiction, again from the opposition leader, in fact, all three bits of fiction I'm dealing with this morning emanate from the leader of the opposition. The next piece of fiction is an allegation that we may have deposits, the Heritage and Stabilization Fund may have deposits in NCB Jamaica or its subsidiaries or affiliates or in Guardian Holdings Limited. And because we allegedly have investments in NCB and Guardian Holdings, this could be the reason why the Heritage and Stabilization Fund has lost a billion dollars. And all of this is, again, a figment of the imagination of the leader of the opposition. The Heritage and Stabilization Fund, I got some information very recently, but as recently as the 31st of July, the net asset value of the Heritage and Stabilization Fund was 5.6 billion US dollars, which is $900 million more US. So you're talking over 6 billion Trinidad and Tobago dollars more than it was at the end of the third quarter in 2022. In 2022, the global equity markets all over the world suffered significant um, adverse you know, events and heritage and stabilization funds and sovereign wealth funds all over the world 
lost value, but that was one year ago. Now, one year later, I want to repeat, the HSF is $5.6 billion. It is more than it was when we came into office in 2015. It has not lost a penny between last year and this year. It has recovered all of its value. So again, this is another figment of the imagination of the opposition leader. And I made sure to ask the fund whether they have any investments in NCB Jamaica, NCB Global Finance, Guardian Holdings Limited, or any affiliated company. And I got a categorical response. The central bank has indicated that the Heritage and Stabilization Fund does not have investments in either NCB FG, does financial group, NCB Merchant Bank, any NCB entity whatsoever, Guardian Holdings, or any associated company associated with Guardian Life, Guardian Holdings. And they went on to say something that people should know. That's why these statements by the opposition leader are so mischievous. These entities are not eligible for investment under the fund's investment framework. So not only does the Heritage Fund have no investments in NCB or Guardian Life or anything associated with those companies, but it's not allowed under the rules. And I would think the opposition leader and her advisors, whoever they are, would know that. Let's come now to the most outrageous statements made recently. On August the 1st, the opposition leader raised the spectacle of a meltdown in NCB Jamaica. Omitted to tell the population that NCB Jamaica is a Jamaican bank. It's not a Trinidad bank. It is not regulated by the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. And omitted to tell the population that the only NCB entity that operates in Trinidad and Tobago is NCB Merchant Bank, which is associated with less than 1% of banking operations in Trinidad and Tobago. Let me repeat that. NCB Merchant Bank is associated with less than 1% of banking operations in Trinidad and Tobago. And therefore it is impossible, even though the central bank in consultation with its colleagues in the other territories in the Caribbean have confirmed that NCB Merchant Bank is in good shape, meeting all its targets, has capital adequacy ratios, everything good. Even though that is so, they still could not possibly cause a systemic collapse in the financial sector in Trinidad and Tobago. And the opposition leader should know that, should know that NCB has less than 1% of banking activity in Trinidad and Tobago. But worse than that, this thing keeps going on. So firstly, there's this attempt to fool the population that somehow the Ministry of Finance, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago have some responsibility for some bank that is regulated in Jamaica, somehow, mysterious connection. It goes on to say that this issue that NCB may or may not be having in Jamaica will somehow affect Guardian Life. Now, you can go on the Guardian Holdings Limited website, which I just did five minutes before I came in this room. I went on the website and I went and I pulled down the consolidated financial statements for the year ending 31st December 2022. Guardian Group, Guardian Holdings Limited. Summary of Consolidated Financial Statements, 2022. And the profit of the Guardian Group before taxation in 2022 was $1.27 billion. And after taxation, $1.13 billion. That's for 2022, that's the profit. Then we go to their first quarter results to March, 2023. And their profit before taxation, $100 million. After taxation, $62 million. We go to their second quarter results. All of this on the website of Guardian Holdings Limited. Second quarter results to 30th June, 2023. 
profit before taxation, $358 million in just three months. And profit after taxation, $253 million. So in the first six months of this calendar year, Guardian Group has made a profit after tax of over $300 million. So how on earth could a company, and the central bank has reported to me that I asked them questions. These are the questions I asked them, and these are the answers. Can any difficulty that NCB, FG, as a financial group, is experiencing possibly create a systemic risk for the financial sector in Trinidad and Tobago because of its majority ownership of Guardian Holdings? There's a response from the central bank. NCB, FG is the parent company for Guardian Holdings. However, the two entities are separate legal entities. Guardian Holdings published its audited financial statements for December 22, I've just read it out, $1.1 billion in profit, which reflected a financially sound position. And most importantly, all Trinidad and Tobago regulated financial entities in the Guardian Holdings Group, which would include the insurance company, are ring-fenced with adequate capital and liquidity at this time. That's my first question. So Guardian is in excellent shape, made a billion dollars profit in 2020, and its assets are ring-fenced. Let's go to my second question. Is Guardian Holdings in any trouble in terms of capital adequacy, ratios, liquidity, et cetera? As stated previously, all Trinidad and Tobago regulated financial entities in the Guardian Holdings Limited Group are meeting regulatory requirements at this time, including adequate capital and liquidity. Third question, I wanted to make sure, is the inspector of financial institution seeing anything in Guardian Holdings reports or statements that are any cause for concern? One would answer, no. And four, if NCB financial group collapses or suffers a liquidity crisis, and that's a Jamaican bank we're talking about. What would that do to Guardian Holdings? Response, NCB simply has shares in Guardian In the event that NCB fails, these shares which are listed on the stock market can be sold without impacting the soundness and safety of the Guardian group. So my press conference this morning is very simple. I would ask members of the media, try not to go into other areas. I mean, we'll see what questions you ask and whether I can answer them or not. But I thought it important to come here and debunk this nonsense that is being put out in the public domain by the leader of the opposition in this election period. Arrant nonsense about another clique, a possible collapse of Guardian holdings and so on. Arrant nonsense. And any sensible person who's interested can go on Guardian Holdings website and check it for themselves. I will now be quite happy to answer questions. Thank you, Minister. Before we proceed, media representatives are kindly reminded to adhere to our protocols and to identify yourself before you pose your question, and also to utilize the raise hand button so that we can acknowledge you. So the floor is now open and we will proceed with our first question. Good morning, Joel. Hi, morning. Hi, Minister. How are you? Um, you would have raised you would have raised the issue of NCBFG, and one of the subsidiaries, NCB Merchant Bank, Trinidad and Tobago. The Jamaican Observer um, reported last week that NCB Merchant Bank has issued a fixed rate bond um, for a two billion dollar debt for the government. That hasn't been reported here. Can you confirm if that has been done? And give us a little explanation about that, that um, bond, please. Well, there's two things you need to know. When these financial institutions raise money for the government, the government gets the money. And the, the onus is now on the government to repay. So there's no risk to the government. You know, the people insinuate all kinds of things. They create smoke and mirrors. They raise all kinds of straw men. You know, they, they, they raise a bogeyman. When a financial institution such as NCB Merchant Bank or 
Scotia Bank or Republic Bank or FCP or any of these, raise money for the government. The government receives them. Not others. Okay. With respect to the particular bond you're referring to, we raise money all the time. I am not aware of a $2 billion bond raised for the government of Trinidad and Tobago within the last week or so. But that is something I could certainly check for you. We are in the market right now for some financing. We haven't borrowed for the financial year yet. It's been another fairly good year. We're now in the market to deal with some uh, deficit financing for fiscal 2023, but I am also not aware that NCB has um, won the bid for that. Now, you need to understand what we do. We go out to tender in a very transparent process to all of the commercial banks. And there are factors such as the interest rate, the fees, the charges, the tenor of the, the, the loan, where it is fully underwritten, and so on. And points are awarded to all of these factors. The, the main factors, of course, that contribute most of the weight would be the interest rate and so on. I am aware that there has been uh, RFP that went out recently. And from what I saw, NCB was not successful with that RFP. So I am not sure what newspaper you're referring to, but I can tell you that we are in the market for a $2 billion bond for deficit financing for the 2023 fiscal year, but it is not FCB that has been successful. I don't know if that helps. Thank you. Um, we'll now take our next question. Good morning, Ryan. Uh, good morning, uh, Minister and uh, everyone present. Uh, I have two questions. Unfortunately, it's a little bit outside of the main topic. Uh, Before you go there, Ryan, you're supposed to identify the media host that you're associated yeah, with. Yeah, it's Ryan Hamilton Davis. Ryan Hamilton Davis from the Trinidad Newsday. All right. I, I wouldn't buy it, you know. Go ahead. All right. Um, well, yeah, two only questions outside. It's a little bit outside what of I'd the, like uh, the do, topic, Ryan, but uh, I, like I want to just present it. Ryan, Ryan, what I'd like to do, let's deal with the topics on hand. Let those reporters who want to speak about Guardian, this nonsense about Guardian being in trouble, or this foolishness about inheritance tax, or the Heritage Fund, I prefer let's deal with those first, and then we could go on to other areas of a financial nature, if you don't mind. Okay? No problem, I'll give away. Uh, any more questions pertaining to the topic that Minister is discussing this morning? Please utilize the raise hand uh, button so that we can acknowledge you. And at this point, there are currently no questions. It seems that whenever I debunk nonsense, okay, well, nobody's interested. Joel, we go back to jo Joel. Well, all right, Minister, this is the go to the first, the first issue that, that you would have raised with the inheritance tax. The fact that you would have to come out, this is all like the third or fourth time to try and debunk the statements that the opposition leader has. Do you think it shows that the population may not necessarily trust the word of the government at this point in time? Um, the reason why I'm asking that is because one of the things that um, the opposition has used is that when questions were raised about the closure of Petrotrin, that there were also statements made that this would not happen, and then eventually it happened. So are you concerned, especially that we're in this election season now, that it is that the population doesn't trust the government, that you have to constantly come and try and debunk these statements? Well, there's a real contrivance you just concocted there. No? I don't know how you could connect alleged statements about Petrotrin with this. We are talking about a fabrication, a figment of the opposition leader's imagination, which has already been emphatically and categorically debunked by the Ministry of Finance, by the Minister of Finance and others in the government. There's no evidence of it. There's no documentary evidence. There's no paper trail. There's no email. There's no WhatsApp. There's nothing that, that the opposition leader could produce to back up the story. So, the reason why I'm debunking this is I want to show the population how reckless the opposition leader is. I could have ignored it. I could have just leave it so. But when I saw this billboard up 
in San Fernando. I said, nah, I'm going too far. So no, I don't agree with you. It has nothing to do with trust. It has, it has to do with my responsibility to debunk nonsense. Okay. Okay, we proceed to our next question. Anthony, you can go right ahead. Good morning, Minister. Morning, colleagues. Anthony, you seem Minister, to be hiding from us. Yes. You want to tilt the laptop a little bit? No, not really. I thought as much. Go ahead. Yeah, Minister, the, I would imagine that the government is looking for revenue raising measures on a constant basis. Um, are you saying that the issue of an, an inheritance tax has never been discussed at cabinet? Yes, never. Never been discussed? Never will be either. Okay. Um, my, my other questions have to do with a, a topic that is unrelated to what you're discussing. So I will, I will hold on. Yeah, because Ryan was ahead of you. Yes, of course. All right, so Ryan, go ahead. Ryan? Yes, can you hear me, Ryan Hamilton Davis, Trinidad News Day again? Yeah. Yes, Ryan. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, a little bit earlier, um, you made a call for um, statements for your contributions because uh, the budget is coming in soon and you were looking for um, some feedback from that. I just wanted to find out how, how what is what has the process been like how so far um how many people have gotten back to you and if you can give me a little bit of a uh, perspective from what they've been giving you the feedback uh, i would appreciate that as well oh, we don't normally get um feedback from the private sector and other you know business groups etc and civil society and individuals until the end of august okay Usually some people take come at the last minute, some people come a week before the budget with a proposal. So we don't really have any significant proposals yet from the wider public as to what they would want to see in the national budget. Okay, so it's a little premature. That question a little premature. All right, and um, second, uh, I have one more question. Um, some information came across our desk about uh, some delays at the airports, particularly with the Swiss port bond, which is um, one of the larger of the um, bonds uh, that, you know, that, the, that supplies the business community. It's been delayed for about four days. I just want to find out if you know anything about yeah, it and if issues. there was any kind yes, of reason. Yes, I, I can deal with that. There are some issues. There are complaints of delays and so on. I have met with customs, I've met with the private sector organizations, especially the, the couriers. They have many complaints about inefficiency and so on. So it's something that you have to keep managing all the time. It is not something that you could turn your back on. It's something that you have to be on top of it all the time. So I met with the various stakeholders very recently. There are a number of issues there because what we're having is some of these transit sheds, for example, we have arms and ammunition coming in and coming in all the time. And in fact, there's a particular transit shed that we're not happy at all at the way illegal things have been coming into that transit shed. And I think the customs has actually shut down that particular shed from time to time. And then I, I, I saw a pre-action letter the other day complaining about customs intervention. So the, these things have two sides. Eh? You have the ease of doing business which we must improve. So you want to get things in and out quickly. But then you have the problem of under invoicing tax evasion. And then you have the problem of importation of illegal arms and ammunition. So it's, it's not a simple thing at all. I am aware of this issue. I think the customs wants to consolidate everything into one, one of the bonds of the PIACO. It's an active matter under active discussion. And we will hopefully find a mutually uh, satisfactory solution that is satisfactory to everyone concerned. Thank you, media. Um, are there any further questions for Minister at this time? Please utilize your raise hand button so that we can acknowledge you. Yes. 
Joel Julian. Yes, Joel. All right, Minister. Um, one of the things I, I, hope, I, I hope you I hope you're stationary in that car, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Jay. <laughs> no, yeah. So, right? <laughs> no, no. Right. Okay. so one of the things that, that took place today is that the, the National Investment Fund will be redeeming or has redeemed the 1.2 billion that would have been that would have been the principal for the series A. But right. um, so we have reached that point after five years uh, interest payments, etc. Can I get a comment from you about that five-year period, seeing the bond being redeemed at this point in time? And two, if there are any intentions to go back to the markets um, with respect to this bond? Well, I think it's a tribute to the National Investment Fund Company, a tribute to this Ministry of Finance, the public servants inside of here, that we were able to issue that bond, pay the interest, a very attractive interest. You have five year, 12 year, 20 year. I think the 12 year is 5.7. The Five year, I'm not sure exactly where it was, but it was at least 1% above the borrowing rate of the government. So it was a significant uplift on what the government would borrow at, and maybe three or four times more than what someone would get from a fixed deposit in the bank. I think it's a, a tremendous achievement that the government was able to repay the entire tranche A of the NIF bonds. $1.2 billion. I have always um, felt it was such an excellent investment opportunity for the general public and for ordinary investors that we should do another one. So that now that we've done the redemption, we are in a position to make an additional offer to investors because people will now have cash on their hands. Because that 1.2 billion, a lot of it came from individuals. You know, there were thousands of individuals who invested in NIF-1. So we are bringing out a NIF-2, and the plan is to have that done before the end of this calendar year, before December of 2023, 2023. And again, it will be at very attractive interest rates. So stay tuned, and you will see a NIF-2 come out, and it's going to be geared specifically to individuals, you know, small businesses, small people, and so on. So stay tuned and look out for a NIF-2. It's coming soon. Thank you. Uh, Anthony, I see that you have a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, Minister, on the issue of NIF 2, um, can you tell us whether um, the MHIL shares are part of your thinking about NIF 2? Not at this time. Uh, could you say why? Well, the, you know, there's a lot of confusion over the sale of those shares, and I wouldn't want the shares to be tied up anything to do with NIF. I wouldn't want it to be tied up in any controversy. So we are going to use other shares to back the NIF too. Um, for example, we have some additional Republic Bank shares that we are going to give to NIF. And there are some other assets, you know, blue chip assets. And those will be used for the backing of NIF too, which was done without a government guarantee. All right, Minister. Um, so the Labour Minister would have mentioned that conversations are taking place within cabinets about the minimum wage. Now, I know you would be impacted by that conversation. Are you willing to share how that conversation has been going? Um, what we can possibly look forward to? I'm not willing to share at all. But what I could share with you, though, is that we are looking at it. You know, there has been a proposal. One of the things you have to understand is that in addition to helping people by obviously by increasing the minimum wage, obviously that's going to help people in the end. It has an, a, 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 an effect on the other side. It has an effect on businesses. And then it has a, an effect on the state sector because in, in some areas, some of the state sector employees are paid at the minimum wage level. And therefore, anytime you increase the minimum wage, the government's wage bill is going to go up. So these are the things we have to balance but um, it is something we are actively looking at. Again, I would say stay tuned for developments on it. Thank you very much. I mean, go back to Anthony, who has another question. Sure. Anthony, do you have a question? Maybe his hand is up inadvertently. Okay. 
Um, hmm. Anthony, if you have a question, please unmute and proceed. If not, um, Minister, there are no other questions. Okay, great. Seems nobody interested. Yeah, hold on. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm going to say nobody interested back in this morning, but up comes Anthony. Go ahead. Minister, I can assure you that I'm not interested in Bacchanal. Um, you assured us that the NIFTU would be attractive. You said um, it could include shares in Republic Bank. Uh, I believe the government has 32.6% of Republic Bank at this point. Um, is the fact that you have plans for Republic Bank uh, the explanation as to why the Trinidad and Tobago Securities and Exchange Commission has not pushed the government to make a takeover bid for the bank. What's your question, Anthony? Could you summarize, please? Is the fact that the government, uh, Corporation Seoul, now owns 32 plus percent of Republic Bank? And the fact that uh, you have signaled that those shares are likely to be part of NIF2, is that the reason why the Trinidad and Tobago Securities and Exchange Commission has not pressed Corporation Seoul to make a bid for, uh, take over bid for Republic Bank? No, that's not it. I said we are going to use some additional shares. I didn't say that we would increase NIF's holding beyond 30%. Okay. And I can tell you now that NIFS holding would not go to the 30% level that requires a takeover. I would also tell you the government has no interest in any takeover bid of Republic Bank. But that's all I would say at this point in time. NIF currently has about 26%. So we're going to transfer about 4% of the 6 or 7% that we got from the Clico Investment Fund to NIF. So NIF's holdings in Republic will go up to, say, 29.99%. But we don't intend to cross that 30% uh, threshold. Okay, that's all I would say at this point in time. And we don't intend to make a takeover bid for Republic Bank. So whatever story you were writing there, you could put it aside. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, Anthony. Yeah. Minister, right. they've been- they've right. been hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I had this press conference to deal with some specific matters. I don't mind dealing with other matters, but let's try and keep it tight, okay? So if you're gonna ask one more question, okay? Um, related to the issue or unrelated to the issue? Anything. Okay. There have been reports out of Jamaica um, <clears throat> that there is a, a legal battle brewing with Cornerstone, Barita, um, and the niece of the founder of Cornerstone, uh, the niece of the founder of Barita. Um, are you aware of that, of that issue and um, how does that affect the for Citizens Investment in Barita Investments Limited? I'm not aware of the issue and I'm not aware either there's any problem with FCB's investment in Barita. Okay. Okay. All right. That's it. Nobody else? No oh, well, thank you very much for keeping this press conference nice and peaceful this morning. Have a nice day. Bye -bye. Thank you to members of the media and the viewing public for joining us. And enjoy the rest of your day. Tell me when I'm no longer left.